Shiel Kapadia here from Philly.com Sports, joined once again by our special guest, Andrew Brandt from the National Football Post. Andrew, we know the potential is there for an uncapped year. It's very real. It's probably coming, but that also means there's no salary floor. So I know there's a lot of misconceptions out there, but in terms of who has the most to gain from this thing, is there a specific group of players, owners, teams, or, or when this thing plays out, who's going to be the ones benefiting? Well, I think for the first time, Shio, we have a negotiation that's really backwards. You have the players seem to want the status quo. They want a salary cap, and the players fought for years to not have a salary cap. The owners are embracing a system without a salary cap, and they fought for years to have a salary <laughs> cap. So it's all backwards here. The real concern, here's the real concern. It's not that a team, everyone po points to the Cowboys or Redskins, going to go crazy and be the Yankees of the NFL. That's not the concern. I think the concern is without a floor, as you mentioned, without a spending minimum, you have teams, and I don't know exactly who, which teams, but they're going to spend a lot less than they have been spending. Now we have a cap minimum of $108 million. You may see teams go to 90, 80, 70, 60 million dollars of spending, where it maybe looks a little bit more like baseball, where you have this huge disparity between the high spenders and low spenders. That's what people aren't focusing enough on. It's the low spending teams rather than the big spenders. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. There is no, uh, no minimum to what they have to spend. So we'll see what kind of direction some of the owners go. But on the flip side, you have the final eight rule with the final eight teams in the playoffs, some restrictions there for uh, free agents. You have the years of service moving up to six from four. Uh, who loses the most if, if there is an uncapped year? Well, it's certainly the four and five year players. And these are names, even on the Eagles, you have uh, Nick Cole, you have Leonard Weaver, you have Jason Avant. On many teams, you know, talk about is San Diego Chargers alone, Vincent Jackson, Marcus McNeil, Malcolm Floyd, uh, Darren Sproles, Sean Merriman. You have Elvis Dumerville and Kyle Orton on the Broncos, along with Brandon Marshall. This is a whole group of players that would be free agents in any other year and aren't. So we have a much more diluted group of people who are actually free agents, which begs the question, who are these teams actually going to spend money on? You have a Vince Woolfork, you have a few names out there, but not the big depth that we've had in other years. So the question becomes, are teams going to be active in restricted free agency, giving huge offer sheets to players who are now restricted and not unrestricted? That's what we have to find out. Yeah, it'll be different than other years where you can just fly the guy in, try to be the first one <laughs> right. to sign him, and, uh, and that's that. Now if you try to sign the restricted free agent, obviously the team has a chance to match it and, and there's going to be draft picks involved. So we'll see how it plays out, but we want to thank Andrew Brandt. You can read his work on nationalfootballpost.com, and you can check out my blog, Moving the Chains, and Philly.com's Eagle section. Thanks for joining us.